What do you think is one of the biggest benefits from going from uh, Premiere to Final Cut Pro? What overall, knowing the same education level on both, what do you see as the biggest benefit? The biggest benefit from going to Premiere Pro to Final Cut Pro is the speed and the ease through which you can translate your thoughts into the actual manipulation of your timeline. There's, there's less resistance between what you're thinking, you know, your video should look like, and actually having it materialize in front of you. There's, there's more effort you have to put in to manipulate a Final Cut Pro, or I'm sorry, there's more effort you have to put into, you know, making a Premiere Pro timeline reflect your vision. There's less resistance. It's more, it's more free flowing. It's more, you know, flow of consciousness kind of thing. So you can get into a flow state much easier. I love that. Yeah. A actually, that's a whole nother separate conversation. I read a book, a very interesting book about getting into a flow state. Um, and human, be every human being is capable of getting into a flow state. They just have to be willing to put themselves there. And like on a pie graph, I saw that you're about four percent out of your comfort zone in either way, either in a good way or a bad way. As long as you're out of that comfort zone where you're like your back is up against the wall and you don't have any other choice, you really can put your, like these um, extreme athletes, you know, these Red Bull guys jumping out of airplanes with these wingsuits and doing stuff that like no other human being's done before. Yeah. That uh, was pretty interesting, but flow state's really cool. A lot of that neuroscience stuff. I'll tell you, there's, there's nothing I enjoy more than sitting in front of Final Cut Pro and just telling myself, okay, like I'm gonna just let myself get absorbed into this narrative right now. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna worry about anything else in my business right now. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna serve this particular story that I'm editing. And that is a beautiful feeling when you can really just allow that to take over you. And you can just create what the story wants to be, you know, created. I've heard a lot of like musicians and producers over the years kind of explain it like you are, but with a lot more showbiz on it. And I'm like, you know, is this really a thing? Or are they just sort of exaggerating? And now after getting involved, I 100% see what you mean. Like your creativity is only limited by what you're willing to put into it. And so freeing your mind of all that other stuff is important. Otherwise it's just clouded. Um, but I've also given a newfound respect to anybody who's produced a movie, a commercial, anything, because there's so many different, just the type of cameras and the lenses and the lighting and the editing. I mean, it all has to go together to be perfect. Yeah, when you talk about a motion picture, not one detail that shows up on the final image is something that was not carefully deliberated. You know, it, it, it's an amazing amount of work and the artistic input that has to go into it. Yeah, I have so much respect for filmmakers. And as a marketing filmmaker, the trick is like how you get as much of that kind of final product into the frame when you're dealing with a small business that doesn't have a million dollar budget or, you know, a, a blockbuster summertime budget, you know, and it's it's a very cool problem to work through, you know, because that's like what I'm always thinking about when I'm working with my clients is like, how do I give them as much Hollywood as I can? How can I articulate through cinema or media yeah. their message and, and make it look, you know, we started thinking about that when we started off in shower doors, like how can we make shower doors sexy? <laughs> because before it was just like, I'll call a glass guy, you know, everybody does shower doors. No, no, we've, we've kind of perfected our craft and we want to showcase that through our media uh, same with my architectural glass. And so this is a big component of that. And it, it's an important one because I don't think believe people believe what they hear as much as they believe what they see. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what they're seeing is has a product of all this stuff. Let's talk about that real quick. Yeah. Um, you were so kind to send me an Amazon link with all the proper things that you thought I would need to achieve the vision that I showed you I wanted, you know, by through examples. You sent me a very detailed email with all these parts and components with an explanation so I didn't fuck it up because I'm very good at that. And stuff came three days later, and now we're here, you're here setting it up, and I, I couldn't be happier, and I really appreciate that. But the cost of it 
where I think some people hear, oh my God, you spent that much. Let's say you wanted to outfit your, your microphones and you, you know, your mixer for the audio and your cameras. Let's say you had a budget of 15 grand. That might seem like an outrageous number, but you're not spending any more money after that to produce shorts, reels, long form video, still shots. The only thing that you're spending after that is elbow grease. And you can do that in your downtime. So instead of binge watching the Nets Netflix, you could spend time learning a skill like Final Pro and really make a name for yourself, not only for your immediate business or if you're a salesman, but I got to imagine if I was young and started over, I would learn how to shoot with a cell phone and learn Final Cut Pro and go around to any wealthy businessman that says, you know, I don't have time for social media, but I see the benefit. I would film them for two days and, and cut up some, some video, and I guarantee they would be hooked immediately. Oh, absolutely. There, there's so many benefits, Keith, to, to owning the production pipeline within your own business. You get to craft your own message. And a lot of times, businesses struggle because they don't always know with great clarity what that message is. And it's expensive if you're trying to hire a production company to shoot you when you're just discovering what those points are, what those messages are, that's a terrible waste of money. Terrible waste. And it, I see it all the time. I turn clients down. I'm like, you know, we have to, before I even start rolling my camera, we have to like maybe sit down and do some kind of consultory work where we figure out what that message is. I'm not gonna like waste, I'm not gonna take your money if you're not clear about what your message is. Because what, you could end up producing something that yeah. they didn't, so the communication component is very key, and I think that's I think that's necessary for any business. It is, and I think there's more value as a business owner to figure that out for yourself. And there's no better way to do that, I believe, than to do it talking to another person. And your camera setup is a proxy for another person. You know what? You're right. And you know what? The way you just showed me to set up this camera with this particular lens, I would have never thought to achieve the angle that you showed me. And after you showed me that. When I have uh, myself, uh, a co-host, and then a guest, I can actually get four shots out of, in post-production, out of one camera shot. So you actually bought me another camera shot or two just by that little trick that I would have never known. And that could end up leading to the next massive opportunity that we get. So I, I appreciate that. I probably owe you a Christmas card. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. My pleasure. I mean, yeah. No, I really believe in the in the idea of a business creating their own production team. Unknown caller. Oh, <laughs> Unknown caller. Unknown caller. Grand Central Station. So yeah, I just, apologies. I should have turned that off. No apologies. But, yes, um, I really believe that every business needs to take control of that production pipeline um, because there's so many dividends. When you own your own message and you own your own channel for delivering that message, there's no restriction uh, you know, to, to what can be achieved. You know, if you, if you decide that your business needs to pivot, you don't have to go through, a, uh, you know, a, a, a strategic meeting with your agency to figure out, you know, like, what does that mean? How do we, you just make- Just you start just, producing new just, content. just start producing new content. You're in charge of your message. And if you are able to master all the different pieces of that pipeline, you are the perfect person to hire somebody when you're now too busy to handle some of those those things. And I hear a lot of people talking about, you know, there's not a big labor pool. What a better way to showcase your culture, your commitment level, and what it is that you actually do through social media or podcasting to put a message out there to applicants that you're trying to seek or headhunt or, you know, acquire. That's a great point. Yeah. In today's world, it's, it's a huge bonus to be able to, to say we have our own media department. Right? That attracts a lot of talented people, and it attracts a lot of young people with new, fresh, creative ideas. And what business doesn't need like a little bit of injection you know, of that's creativity? In, that's interesting. That, well, every business should, <laughs> and they should at least be open to it. But you know, your traditional businesses, they have kind of, they enter the market, and then eventually they have an exit strategy. And depending on the area of business that you're in, there's different multiples that they would usually do times your EBITDA to kind of put an overall value on your business. But because so few businesses have a media arm like this attached to it, 
I actually think it's going to bring more value to the business on the long tail, definitely, because you're not outsourcing, you're controlling everything. And I know this channel is going to get to a point where it's going to be monetized. So it's actually going to be producing cash flow, which is going to add another point or two to the multiple for an exit strategy. So I think I don't know of a bad benefit of it. No, it's true. I know a lot of companies that have started their own media departments for the purpose of self-promotion. And then when they get large enough, they have to start bringing talent in to, to start filling those stations. And now they have a director, a producer, they have an editor, they have a motion designer. And now they can create content for other businesses. They can, you know, now you're almost like a mini agency and you can actually, you know, outsource that. That's another stream of income. I mean, it's I'm going to put it here on tape because it's funny you say that. Jay and I have talked about that. You notice we got the weight bench back there. We have a kitchen. But we're thinking, geez, if this goes well, this probably ends up being a Gary Vee story where we start an ad agency in the back of a shower door shower room. I mean, <laughs> what a really cool story. I'm Dude. glad that this is on tape. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah. I, I love that you're thinking that way. I mean, that's, that's just incredible. Yeah, there's no, there's no limits to, to what you do. Uh, when, and when you're creating your own content, you can pivot on a dime. On a dime. And, you know, you know you're going to be making mistakes along the way. The ones that win are the ones that are just willing to try. And so you just keep making these decisions. But you're right, with social media, you can, we could start a new media campaign tomorrow. We could start talking about something different. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think there's just endless possibilities. I'm excited for the future. And it's really a newer medium compared to what we've been used to for the last 100 years with TV, radio, newspaper, print. That's it. And you're kind of hamstrung to what you can do, what you can't do. This, there's so many things that people haven't even attempted to do yet. Mm. You know, imagine going back to before they started creating music and you're like, what does the landscape look like? Well, it's endless. Well, that's what this is like. It's, it's really relatively new, comparatively speaking to everything else. I love that analogy. Yeah, it really is wide open. And it, from, from my standpoint, you know, I grew up, in a, in a small, small town in New York, I was a dishwasher. I was working in the back room of my father's diner. And all I knew was, you know, like, this is my life. I'm going to probably, you know, like, end up running this diner someday. And then I discovered photography, you know, in high school. I was like, wow, this is this opens up a whole new avenue. Like, so I can create, like, how my own vision can get fleshed out. And cool. that opened up other, you know, avenues. I got into computer-generated art. I got into... Some other things, which led to something else, which led to something else. Next thing you know, I'm, I'm a videotape supervisor at CNN in Atlanta, <laughs> and next thing you know, I'm I'm doing you know commercials that are national, broadcasted commercials, and uh, there's no limit. Like whatever you think of, whatever you think is possible, you can do. And uh, you know, social media is such a great avenue for anybody who has a dream to expand, to grow. 100%. Your barrier to entry is literally a cell phone. And in yeah. this day and age, a lot of people that I know have cell phones. And so your barrier to entry is really only getting over your fear of getting involved and just starting. Oh, I love it. And then eventually they're going to go to one of your posts and buy all this camera equipment and lenses so they can have a professional podcast like this one. It, it's probably not going to be as good as this one, to be honest. He's first. not lying. First. He's not lying. But <laughs> hey, listen, you got to inspire. Somebody's got to be the inspirational one. That's right. Okay. All right. What do you think? Do you think that's enough video that we can yeah. throw into the computer? Yeah, yeah. It's a wrap. Beautiful. <laughs>